I am here today to bring you a stream of Railroad Inc. This is a game I am hugely fond of. It's a roll and write. Um, those who aren't familiar with the term, you may have heard me mention it when I brought up Cartographers a couple of videos ago. Uh, but Railroad Inc. is a game where you roll dice and based on the results of what you roll, you are going to draw certain things out onto a grid um, and try to achieve your goals. Uh, in Railroad Inc., we are specifically creating railroads and highways uh, and potentially some other things based upon the expansions that are included in the game. Uh, so, uh, I'm just waiting a couple of seconds to give Twitch a couple of uh, couple of minutes to catch up with me and make sure that my stream quality is coming through okay. Um, right now, it's just showing me still offline, I think, while it catches, its system catches up and... and uh, there's a little button that usually says excellent after a minute, and I just want to make sure that's running. Um, but yes, in the meantime, this game is from Come On, uh, previously Simon, uh, and Horrible Guild, uh, designed by Hjalmar Huck and Lorenzo Silva. And as you can see from in front of me, there are two different editions of it. There is the Deep Blue edition and the Blazing Red edition. Uh, the base game that is included in these two editions is identical. Uh, there is no difference there. Uh, what, what is different, different are the expansions that are in each box. box. Um, the Deep Blue edition uh, contains uh, expansions that allow you to add either a river or rivers, I should say, or lakes to your um, uh, to your map. And the Blazing Red edition uh, it adds volcanoes and meteors. Uh, and there's a fairly substantial difference between the two in the sense that the Deep Blue Edition and its various expansions are gentle uh, and they are more in line of, of a, a sort of zen game that you can play where the uh, Blazing Red Editions are games are, uh, or expansions, sorry, are much more in line of being a little bit more aggressive and they tend to break stuff that you've already built. Um, so there is a little bit of a difference there. Uh, but they are all very, very enjoyable expansions, and my hope today, uh, if my timing proves right, pardon me, um, I'm just making sure that everything is working okay, because my, my uh, feedback from Twitch is a little iffy. No, it says I'm live. Okay, excellent. Um, my hope today is that I'm going to play through five games. Um, you have a freaky echo. Oh, oh, interesting. interesting. What's, What's causing, causing that? that? Sorry, uh, thank, thank you, Scott. Scott, uh, Scott, Scott, Scott Moyle just came and joined. Oh, oh I, I see. see. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate the heads up. Um, I've added a camera today. Uh, you'll notice uh, that I've got this guy over here, um, which I put up so that people can play along. Uh, unfortunately, I added that at the very last second, and I just realized I did not turn off the audio feeding in. So I have uh, this above me is my phone uh this camera over here is my ipad and i forgot to turn the uh i forgot to mute the ipad's audio um hopefully this is substantially better uh i will start that intro again just for anybody who may have missed it so we're doing railroad inc today uh this game by hyama huck and lorenzo silva and from come on and horrible guild and is a roll and write game where you are generating um uh, highways and railways and potentially more stuff based on the expansions that we include. Uh, the great thing about today is you guys are going to be able to play along if you would like to. Um, if you have Railroad Inc, obviously use a board. Uh, if you do not, you can just draw out a 7x7 seven seven grid and it'll be fairly clear. There's a few markings on the boards and they're very, very easy to replicate. So if you would like to play along with me, please do. That's why I've created this extra little camera. And uh, let's talk about the game. Uh, very, very simple boxes. Uh, they come with a bunch of player boards in the top. And underneath those, oops, um, we just have some pens and space for the dice. Uh, and that's literally all that you need to play. And you only need one set of dice. Uh, the game comes with six boards, so you can play it with one to six people. Um, or indeed, if you get a second copy of it, you can play with 12 people. In fact, you can basically play this with an infinite number of people, uh, as long as you have a means of communicating what's rolled on the dice. This is one of the game boards. Uh, this, I'm afraid there might be a little glare, which is why I wanted to do the picture in picture for the dice. Uh, but this is the deep blue board. Uh, we have the dice that come in the game here. We have four base dice, and I'll explain about those in a moment. And then we have 
the river dice and the lake dice and we will come on in a while to this little pile of stuff which is the dice that come in the blazing red edition the four base dice are the same and then we have volcano and meteor uh, i'm going to do uh, play with the deep blue board first and we'll come on to the blazing red edition a little bit later on down the line hello billy nice to see you uh, lovely to have you along and watching so uh, this is the board and also the scoring track for Railroad Inc. Um, oh, I'm going to remember to say this at the beginning of the stream. Uh, for anybody who is watching this after the fact on YouTube, please turn on Klingon subtitles. Uh, if I make any mistakes during this stream, I will be able to post them up there. Uh, or if I make any comments about something I've forgotten to explain and I will explain it later, uh, I will mention it there so that you guys uh, know something is coming in case you're not familiar with the game. Okay, um, so yes, I'm just going to lose my camera in camera for a minute because it is, I realise, re uh, reducing my space to show you things. Here is the board. Uh, it is a 7x7 seven seven grid. Uh, the th nine spaces in the centre are paler and marked out. That's because uh, you sort of make the game slightly harder for yourself by filling those in in some ways, but you get points for doing so. Uh, you'll also see along the side here we have these red arrows. Uh, these are the exits, but you're, you're going to get the most points in this game by connecting as many of those exits to each other as you possibly can. Uh, you'll also notice that we have railroad exits, like so, with the, the line with the um, uh, cross lines going across it, uh, representing the sleepers. And we have highway exits here where the road is. You cannot connect a uh, railroad directly to a highway, you cannot connect a highway directly to a railroad, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but uh, the, you, in order to connect those up, you have to create links. Uh, these are the possible faces that can show on the dice that are in the game. Uh, you'll see that a bunch of them feature railroads, a bunch of them feature highways. This is a railroad going underneath a highway. Uh, that is not a connection. Uh, that is an overpass, and the, uh, that would not connect those two things together. But these two feature stations. Those black squares are stations, and so if you add one of those in, you can connect the two features together. Very simple. The six additional, much more complicated uh, patterns on the top are special ability uh, spaces, essentially. Three times during the game, you are allowed to pick one of those and add it to your grid. You can do that once per turn only, so I can't take two of them in the same turn, but they can allow you some serious advantages to, to let you fill in some gaps. Uh, and then directly underneath that, um, we have the... Uh, different methods of scoring that you're going to have at the end of the game. Uh, the number of networks you've connected, your longest road, your longest ne uh, railway network, how many of the nine central spaces you've filled in. This is for dead ends. You will lose points for dead ends. Every dead end space that you have, um, you will uh, lose a point. So you don't want roads and railways ending in nothing. Uh, and then the star implies the expansion content, which we'll come on to in a bit. Um, Oh, really? You have talked to hundreds of people. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, I think it's more of a question of it is certainly possible to do so, was what I intended. Uh, I'm not implying in any way that that would be easy. Uh, and as to which expansions I'm going to run with, um, my intention, uh, depending upon exact timing, uh, is going to be to play a uh, base game out of the... Um, uh, from the outset, and then I'm, it, I'm hoping I'm going to run through each of the four expansions in turn. So I'm going to play five games today if all goes to plan. So let's get down to it. How does this work? We're going to play seven rounds. That will be different when you add in an expansion, uh, even though it says uh, it will add a varying, uh, it will change to a varying number of rounds when you add expansions. In actual fact, they all reduce the game to six. Um, and the number of rounds is obviously reduced because you're playing with fewer dice, filling the grid in faster. And there's a little bit, it's sort of also, I think, working to keep the, the time of the game relatively consistent, even with expansions. I'm going to put these four dice to one side for now. I'm also going to bring my camera in camera back in so that you guys can play along. Um, and let's, oh, oh, what's this? Billy was playing this from the other room. I thought I need to tell David there's a guy on Twitch with his voice. There is a guy on Twitch with my voice. Um, if there's another guy on Twitch with my voice, please let me know uh, so that we can either sort of do something together and and maybe the world will implode, I don't know, uh, or um, 
I don't know. Maybe maybe we need to have a, a, a rivalry on Twitch. I'm not sure. Have I seen the horrible guild posting about railroading challenge green and yellow? Yes, I have. Um, we've obviously I'm talking here about uh, deep blazing red and deep blue, which are the two copies of this that exist. May the twelfth, there is going to be a Kickstarter for uh, Railroad Inc. Challenge, green and yellow, which adds a few extra things. Uh, green, I think you're creating a nice little verdant forest, uh, and yellow takes place in the desert, and you actually have to run water to irrigate your cacti uh, while you're also doing everything else in the game, which sounds kind of fun. Um, also, for those of you who are interested, if you go onto the Horrible Guild website, you can actually sign up to... Um, uh, be notified when the Kickstarter goes live. If you do, there is a solitaire-only board um, that, if I read it correctly, features teleportation. I'm not quite sure how that works, but you will get that if you sign up for notification when Kickstarter the Kickstarter goes live. Obviously, I have done that, um, because a solitaire-only board very much appeals to me. But yeah, just thought I'd mention that that was a thing. Uh, okay, let's get going. Um, anybody who would like to play along, please do. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on the chat as I go. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Or if I miss something glaringly obvious, please let me know as well. Um, we're going to play seven rounds, and I'll kind of talk through the logic of each one as I go. So, uh, each round, roll up the dice. Uh, let's see how these show up once they come up on my Twitch stream. Brilliant, you can see those. Excellent. Um, so what we have here is uh, a couple of right-angled roads, a right-angled railway, and just as a reminder, the, this is an overpass. This is a road going over the railway. It does not join the two features together. Now what I'm going to want to do, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is to connect as many of these exits. So I could do you know, something like a right-angled road heading this way and a right-angled railway heading this way and then hope to join the two of them in the center. That's not, that. I mean, it would give me two exits, but as you can see here, two exits connected is only worth four points. Now I will score every set of exits that I have. So if I do that, I'm not cutting myself out, but the more exits you can actually connect together, the more points they're gonna be worth, up to a full 45 if you connect all 12. Um, so that gives you some idea of, of kind of what you're working for. Uh, Billy says they've made the overpass more visually distinct in the green and yellow. Uh, yeah, I, I, if I remember correctly, um, I'll just draw this out. Uh, I had a look at that and um, forgive my drawing, uh, but I believe the overpass looks something more like this uh, in the, there we go. Uh, so there's that sense of there actually being the railway going underneath something rather than just kind of stopping and coming out the other end. Um, that's great. I mean, it, it is fairly clear in this. The logic is is present, but they did obviously have to make a note in the rule book in, I think, two separate places stating this is not a connection. Uh, do not count it as such. Um, my apologies for the fact that the ring light is giving some glare to my board. It seems to be a little better if I aim it a little bit higher up. So I'm going to try and draw up here and, and give you as little glare as possible. And let's see what we can do. So um, I'm going to... Uh, okay, I think I'm going to hope that I'm going to get something uh, to link this up a little later. And I'm going to put that overpass right here. And we'll see where this goes. Uh, and what you also do is you write the number of the round that you added a feature in, in the top right hand corner. There's a little uh, space there for it. Um, I guess if you have a group that is so inclined that it allows people to look back and make sure that you haven't, uh, haven't done anything untoward. But it's also, once you have ended a round, you cannot erase a previous feature. So it also is a good way of reminding you, okay, I added that last round, I can't touch it, versus, oh, I did just add that, I don't want it anymore, I'm gonna erase it and put it somewhere else. Um, I have two roads. I'm gonna assume I'm gonna get a T-junction at some point, I think. And uh, what have I got? I've got the right-angled railway. Uh, I'm going to send the right-angled railway this way. And there we go. And I'm going to do a right-angled road here. And a right-angled road here. There we go. So that's my round one. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to sort of keep moving just because I want the stream to keep going. And uh, if you guys want to play along and I'm moving a little too quickly, feel free to pause the stream and catch back up again. Uh, this is roll two. 
Okay, what have we got? Um, so we have the T-junction, we've got a couple of uh, right angle railways, and we've got that overpass again. I don't really want that overpass again, but okay. Um, then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this railway into the center, um, because there's some nice points in there if you can get them. Uh, in case you hadn't gathered already, my drawing is not the greatest. Uh, and I've got that T-junction here, and there's a little cross in the center, and we're going to do that. Um, what's that? You did the same thing I did, but I'm the top instead of the bottom. Fair enough! Um, it seemed like a fairly logical uh, logical thing to do with that. We'll see whether it actually pays off or not. I've just realized the one thing I have done is created myself a... Well, it doesn't have to be a dead end, but I need a straight road to connect through that to make that work properly. Um, I'm going to bring this guy around here. Uh, and hope that goes somewhere. And I'm going to bring... I'm going to hope I'm going to come out towards this guy over here. So I'm going to bring this guy around here. Now, one of the things with this, and this is true of many roll and writes, but I think this roll and write is perhaps more uh, guilty of it than many. Not guilty, that's the wrong word. That implies it's a bad thing, but it's easier to do in this than many, is it is extremely possible to screw yourself up fairly early in the game. Um, you have to think ahead, uh, and sometimes if things just don't go the way you're expecting them to, you know, you end up unable to fill in certain gaps. And I mean, that's kind of the fun of this kind of thing, is, is how can you work with what's given to you. I can plan to have a straight line going through here and a T-junction here to make sure I can carry on that highway, but if I never roll those things, well, I have the special uh, things that I can use, but that's, I have to rely on that then, and that can be risky. So here's roll three. So the overpass is back. Ah, there's my T-junction uh, and some more right angles. So I'm going to put that T-junction in straight away just to ensure that I don't do something stupid like forget about it. Uh, that's going to go in here. Now I don't want to put that here because that would not get me anywhere. I mean, it would link these two up, but it would form a dead end for me that would be a minus point at the end of the round. Um, I've got the T-junction. I've got that blasted overpass again. Um... I don't need that right now, except what I might do is put it here. Uh, oh, that was round three. I am going to put the overpass right here. And do that. Um, have I heard about Renegade's new game, The T-Junction Society? <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Billy, thank you. Um, that would be a reference, I believe, to the Tea Dragon Society. Uh, which is a rather wonderful game, by the way, if you haven't played that. Uh, a nice little filler I've, I've enjoyed a couple of times. Um, that's round three. And what have I got left? I've got the right-angled road. Um, and that's tricky, because I kind of need all the roads over here to do their thing. Okay, what I might do then is I might bring that road... I'm going to... I'm getting a lot of overpasses here. I'm going to assume I'm going to get another one. This may be a terrible, terrible move, but I'm going to send this road this way. Uh, and I'm going to assume I'm going to get a right angle to go this way, and then I'm going to overpass this square here. Uh, that may or may not happen. Um, who's to say? I can always bring in this one which would actually not only be an overpass, it would be a connector. Because right now, although these two exits will be connected if I get a through road, uh, it will not connect currently to this one because the railroad is not joined up to my highway. Uh, I could always put the T-junction to connect those two roads and put the extra road off the edge of the board. That's true. Uh, dead ends off the board don't lose points. I thought they did. Oh, my bad. Um, Okay, uh, then I'm I'm maybe giving myself a more of a challenge than I was expecting. Um, okay, yeah, because I know the river doesn't, uh, but I thought that the roads did. Obviously, I have had that wrong as well. Um, fair enough. Uh, did I do four there? One, two, three, four. Yes. Okay, so this is the round four roll. Okay, so there's a station, T-junction, uh... There are curved stations and straight stations, as you can see here. One thing, oh, I didn't say this earlier, um, you can rotate these dice. So if I want that station uh, as it's standing here, uh, you guys are seeing it sort of with the station, the railway curving left from the road. If I want the railway to curve right from the road, that's fine, I can mirror that die. There isn't a station left, station right die. Um, 
there's just the station left die, so to speak, so you're able to flip that quite comfortably. Um, okay, I'm going to do that through road just because my mind likes the completion of it. And that's going to go here, so that's round four. Uh, T junction of station. Um, I think I'm just going. You are going to end up, by the way, uh, with some dead ends. Uh, it's almost impossible not to do that. Uh, I'm sure it is possible not to do that, but you'd have to be very, very lucky with the dice. Um, I am happy just to kind of work with uh, getting a few. I'm just trying to minimize the number that I do get. Um, okay, so that's the through road. I've used that. Uh, I've got that guy, I've got that guy, and I've got that guy. Uh, through road T junction. Okay, what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to make sure that these guys can connect right now by putting the station here. Uh, so now all I need, theoretically, is a right angle, and I've connected those two exits. Again, the T junction would be preferred because I can send things off. Uh, what I may even do is use one of the specials because now I'm in round four. I need to use specials sooner than later. Uh, because you can only use one per turn and you can use a maximum of three, which means if I don't use one this round, I have to use one in each of the next three or I've wasted that opportunity. So in actual fact, uh, I'm going to use this guy here. And I'm going to do the T-junction of train here. And that's going to be the road, because that can then connect off to here, and if I get that overpass, uh, I'll just use it slightly differently to how I was expecting. Um, I'm going to put, I've then got the right angled railway still to use, I'm going to put that here. And we'll see where that ends up going. So that's my round four. Here comes round five. Okay, there's the overpass after all that. Um, and we've got straight road, curved road. Okay. So I'm actually going to use this guy now. And I'm going to kind of do the opposite of what I just did. So I'm going to put the... Oops. I'm going to put this guy here like this. There's the station in the middle. And then that guy's going to go off there like that. So hopefully I'll get a straight railway that I can send off that way. That's round five. And then I'm going to do uh, Oh, I also need to connect this slot up. Noting again that this railroad and highway are still not connected in any way. Uh, I'm going to bring my straight road down here, because I need those to link up. Um, I don't want to put the overpass here, because I've kind of, that would lock out... Oh. One of the danger of this game is because you're drawing all over the place, it's very easy to smudge what you've already drawn. Um, I've used the straight road... I'm going to put the T-junction here. Like so. Uh, and then I've got the overpass, and I've got the right-angled road. Uh, that does kind of take me out from here. Oh, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do... I'm actually going to do the overpass here. And then I'm going to do the right angled road going. I'm going to hope I get a T junction here. I'm going to do that. So that's one, two, three, four, and the special. That's five. So that's round five. Here we go with the round six dice. Okay, T junction railway. Did I want that? Yes, in two different places. 
Uh, okay, I'm going to put the through road here. No, I'm going to drain this up. That doesn't help me right now, does it? Um, I'm going to put the through road here because I want to get that joined up with more alacrity. So that's round six. Uh, I'm going to put the overpass. Hmm. I mean, I could use the overpass to seal this gap, which would allow me much more easily to connect everything here. Oof, I had to draw my own grid and I just realized I totally forgot about the bonus squares in the middle. Oh, <laughs> that's, I get that, Casto. Um, yeah, if you haven't marked those out, I can, I can see ignoring them being very easy. Um, and hello to Mr. Matthew Plays as well. Hello, fellow Roll and Writer. Hello to you too. Um, something I very much enjoy is Roll and Writes. A lot of them can be played solitaire, which is what this channel does. Uh, is I look at solitaire games, uh, tutorials, and playthroughs. Uh, I did cartographers a couple of videos ago, which you can see on my Twitch channel. Uh, or also, if you look up Once Upon a Die on YouTube, uh, I've already uploaded the cartographers play to there, where all my all my streams are going to go once I've uh, once I've finished them. But thank you for coming along and watching. I appreciate it. Please do give me a follow uh, if you haven't already. I would love that. Um, and uh, we're currently on round six of the base game of Railroad Inc. And I'm confusing the living daylights out of myself with what I'm trying to do here. Um, I also have this to wrap in too, don't I? Uh, okay, I'm going to do... I'm going to start doing some connecting here. So I'm actually going to put the overpass here. This is going to lose me a point. But then if I do the T-junction here... Now all of a sudden, this is all linked together. Uh, the only thing I haven't linked in yet is this highway, but this corner and this whole top section are now linked. Uh, this section over here, I have a feeling, is going to get a little bit left. Been playing a couple of printable roll and writes lately on stream, and this looks very much like my jam. Excellent! Oh, if you haven't played uh, Railroad Inc. before, it's a fantastic roll and write. Um, it's extremely simple, but the really nice thing is that each box, this is one of the boxes that the game comes in, uh, and each one of these comes with the base game, with enough for six players to join in, but also um, two expansions. Uh, and I'm going to be playing through the expansions in just a moment. Um, and uh, that kind of gives you a little bit more content so you can vary up the game a little bit. Um, thank you also. I've just seen uh, that um, I've had a couple of followers. Thank you, Mr. Matthew, and also the Braless Wanda and Scott have all followed me. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Um, Matthew asks, is the red box a better value than the blue? No, uh, they, they contain exactly the same thing. Thank you, Casto, another follow. I appreciate that. Uh, the two boxes are exactly the same in terms of value. You get in each one uh, six of the boards, six of the pens, the four base dice, and then two expansions. The difference is that the blue box is a little more zen. Uh, you'll see this if you hang around my stream for the next hour. I'm going to play through all four expansions. Um... But the, the blue box is a little more zen. You're adding rivers, which is just a third type of, of roadway. And you're adding lakes, um, which they're an interesting little obstacle to play with. But the nice thing is that you can also use a lake as a gigantic station, kind of, because they have piers on them. And you assume that a boat is connecting those two piers. So you can kind of really stretch how far out you're connecting everything. Uh, and if uh, I presume you didn't catch the beginning of the stream, but um, the most, the, likely the most points you'll get in this game is from connecting as many of these exits where these arrows are on the outside of the board. Um, the red edition, uh, as Billy has just said, is chaos. Uh, one of the expansions adds a volcano in the middle of the board that spits out lava. You have to use... Uh, lava dice when they come up you have to use uh, at least one of them uh, and it will spread out as it goes and if you don't have any other choice uh, chances are you're going to have to burn up one of your roads or railways that you've placed you can generate more volcanoes uh, but that can be a little bit chaotic and the other red expansion introduces meteors and the meteors are very random um, you'll, I'll come on to them in a bit but basically they will you find a square 
a certain grid distance from where the previous one hit, and a meteor just comes and slams into that space, destroying anything that you have already built there. Uh, it does have some benefits, because if you have still connected the crater that is created to the exit, it gives you bonus points because you're mining resources from it, but it causes a lot more havoc than the base game. So that's the difference between the two boxes. Um, End times railroading. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good description, kind of. Uh, you'll see how those work at the end. I'm going to do the two blue expansions first and then move on to the two red expansions, I hope, time permitting. Uh, but yes, I'm, my intention is to go through all of that. So uh, hang around a bit and you'll, you'll get an idea of what they do. Anyway, let me just finish this off before I lose my place too much. Uh, so I've done this guy, this guy, and this guy, which means I still have the right angled road to place. Um, I'm going to put that... I don't really want to put... Oh, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that here in the hopes that I get a T-junction. Uh, or I can use the special to ensure that I get that. Um, so that's my round six. I'm going to leave the special right now because I want to see what I'm going to come up with. I think you'll be purchasing the blue box. You're very welcome. Uh, I think that that, from what you've said... Um, uh, yeah, comets and volcanoes, you say no thank you. Yes, I think the blue box is going to be more up your street. Um... It's aesthetically kind of, uh, you know, they're very, very similar. But gameplay-wise, Red is definitely more aggressive as a game, like the game fighting back against you almost, uh, where Blue is a little... It's kind of like, you know, one of them you're playing, I don't know, Takedo, and the other one you're playing Alien Frontiers, if that makes any sense. Like, you're, you're being much more beaten back by uh, the Red Box. So here's our final draw, and that is completely not what I needed. Um... Oh, crap. I can't connect this all together anymore. Uh, or can I? Is there a way I can make that? Oh, I think I can just... Because mm. I can use a special to connect this all in. But then how do I connect this over here? I can do right angle. I can do straight. But then I'm stuck with a right angle. I think I've screwed myself up. Um, right, right angle, right angle. Oh, right angle, right angle, station, T-junction. Oh, no, that will do it. Okay, uh, I'm going to use this guy. It's going to create a dead end in the nature of the greater good. Uh, I'm going to do that. And that goes in there, so that's round seven. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to put the station here. Oops. And... There is my station. Um, Railroad Inc. David's Hubris. Yep, that sounds very, very accurate. Oh, Billy, you're hosting me. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate that. Um, and then I do right angle here. And does that connect everything? Connected, 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 connected. It's just this little mucky thing over here, which I think is just going to have to go into the middle of nothing. There's nothing I can do with that. Uh, David's hubris indeed. So I've done that. I've done that. Um, I've done that. I still have... You have to use every die. I sh I'm not sure if I said that. You don't have a choice. So I do have to put this stuff out somewhere, which is going to leave me with another dead end. Um, I'm going to minimize my dead ends, however, by putting the straight here. Uh, which is not really straight, but there we go. I am not creating Roman roads. And then I'm going to bring this guy in here. That's the other thing, isn't it? Yes. Okay, there we have it. That's my board. So, scoring this game is extremely simple. The first thing you do is you count up how many exits you have connected together. Um, this whole network, with the exception of this wonky little bit of railroad over here, is linked. So, one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which is a total of 28 points. This is the lovely thing about this. The scoring is right in front of your face. If I had managed to connect this to here, that would also be a 2 for an extra 4 points, but I don't get that, so this is going to be 28. The longest road. Now, when you're counting out the longest road, branches don't count, so I can't do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 off this way and still count this little uh, square here. It's the longest road that's uninterrupted, which I think is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because that would be shorter. 1, 2, 3, 4... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's only 7. So yeah, my longest road is going to be 9. 
Longest railway is the same deal. I can't use branches. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So this will be my longest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. So eight is my longest. Um, if I had, for example, do I have it on the board? Uh, here, where there's a station, if I had connected this piece of road here, I would have been able to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and gone through the station and carried on. The station doesn't stop the um, uh, connection there, uh, but uh, 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 overpasses don't connect and branches don't count towards that. Matthew, thank you very much for hosting me as well. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm very new to the whole streaming thing. This is only about my seventh stream, and I really appreciate you guys helping me to get the word out. Um, this is, you get points for every one of the squares in the middle you've put something in. I have not put something in one, which means I'm going to get eight points. Um, this is my dead end. So I have a dead end here, a dead end here, here, here. So that's four, five, six. And Billy, you were saying that dead uh, roads going off the board do not count as dead ends. Um, okay, I guess yes, because you can. It can be assumed that they're going to. Can do, I think it's the wording they use for the river. Uh, I'm going to check that wording actually, just so that I read it out correctly. They had a good phrasing for it. Um, uh, yeah, it says. Where is it? I read this somewhere. Connected to the outer, the edge of the board. Maybe it's in one of the examples. I can't find it now, but I think it was for the river, and it said it can be assumed that it continues on to another river, which I, I guess is the same for these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, is all of my dead ends. There isn't one here, because that station goes everywhere it needs to. So that's minus six, which means my final final score here is going to be uh, eight, and eight is 16, minus six is 10, so that's 38. Uh, that's going to be 47. Not bad, all in. I don't think. I haven't played this for a while, and I honestly can't remember what my best scores are, but I'm going to take it. So that is the base game of Railroad Inc. That gives you some idea of how this plays. Uh, I'm now going to move on, and I'm just going to play four more games. And each time I'm going to incorporate one of the expansions, and I'll just briefly talk about how that works. Uh, so give me a second just to erase everything that's on my board. These are the pens that come with the game, by the way. Um, they're actually really, really nice. They just have a, a weird... Yeah, that this is uh, it's leaving a residue on the board from the uh, eraser, which is a shame. I'm just going to see if I can Kleenex that off. Excuse me for one second. I had these to hand just in case. I don't know if this is going to make much of a difference. Oh yeah, there we go. That's just got the uh, the last bit of the residue off. So, um, first expansion I'm going to play with is the river. Um, all the expansions have two things in common. They all add two dice to the game. Um, center page of the rulebook under end of the game. Um... Oh yes, uh, I see what you, that's for the actual rule. Um, yes, each end of a route that does not connect with any other route or the outer edge of the board counts as an error. Uh, it was the specific wording I was looking for was the, the, the nice one where it sort of says, it's assumed it carries on into this because this is quite a useful... Um, uh, useful way of doing it. 53, nice! Excellent work, the Brawless Wonder. Um, that is, uh, yeah, you, you, you got me there. Um, you do that. I did this with them. Um, so Jamie Stegmeier, um, for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to stream this probably next week, has created a game called Rolling Realms, uh, which is a roll and write that has nine different sections to it. Uh, and each, each turn you roll two dice and you're using them in three sections per round. So you do three rounds of three. Um, and uh, each one is themed to one of the games that uh, Stonemaier Games has released. Um, the cool thing with that is every time he creates a new edition, he teaches it by playing it on his YouTube live stream. And that video stays on the Jamie Stegmeier YouTube page, which means you can actually play along with him. So I now have an opponent in my BG stats, which is Jamie Stegmeier stream. Uh, and I just use that for playing along with him each time he creates a new version of that game. Um, so yes, uh, please feel free to have a DA Xavier stream uh, if you would like to. Okay, so uh, let's move on to this one. So the river, uh, and if I bring this, I actually realize I don't need to lift stuff up to my phone. I can actually just hold it here. Um, which way am I going? I'm going that way. There we go. Um, the river just adds 
the river as a new type of um, terrain that you're building, just like a road or a um, uh, railway. Uh, and they score in exactly the same way. So there's very, very little to adding this expansion other than creating that challenge. You do not have to... Oh, uh, Matthew, one other thing for you. Um, in both of the blue expansions, you do not have to use a blue die unless you want to. In the Volcano's Red Expansion, you have to use one of them, and in the Comet Red Expansion, they work in tandem. One tells you um, which direction the meteor hits in, and one tells you how far away from the last meteor. So in, it, it, it's nice because you have a little bit more uh, li uh, license to do your own thing with the blue expansion. So again, if you're looking for something a little less aggressive against you, that goes there too. All right, so we're going to play six rounds because we're doing an expansion and we're using all six dice and we can draw as many as we wish. And here is my first roll. Uh, so rivers do not connect to roads or railways for obvious reasons. You can, uh, you'll see, for example, here we have a rail bridge going over the river, uh, but you run the river off the edge of the board. Uh, an end of a river counts as a, uh, an error, uh, but if it goes off the edge of the board, it does not. Um, presumably you can also loop them together to form like a circular river. Uh, I haven't tried doing that. Uh, and the scoring for this one is one point per river, uh, space. And there's a thing. Yes. If both ends of a river go off the edge of the board, you get three additional points for that river. So with that born in mind, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to start over here and I'm going to draw this guy here and the river is going to come through this way. So that is that rail bridge. And then I can also use the straight river to go off the edge of the board. And that sets me off nicely to hopefully be able to uh, make that a thing going forwards. Um, and now I can try and do something. So I kind of want that overpass result again. Honestly, if you just make a seven by seven, you could play today even. Yeah, absolutely correct. Um, yeah, if you just want to draw out a 7x7 seven seven grid, uh, Matthew, uh, I'm just going to lift this up, uh, just switch back to my OBS for a second so I can see I'm showing you the right thing. It's literally a 7x7 seven seven grid. You just need to mark the center and then the, the two sort of outside center spaces on each one as the exits. Road, rail, road, rail, road, rail, road, rail, road, rail, road, rail. And outline, as uh, as Casto forgot earlier, outline the nine spaces in the middle uh, because you get bonus points for filling them in. So if you don't outline them, it would be very, very easy to forget to fill them in. But yeah, if you just draw something like that out, um, you can fill it in. Billy, don't be ridiculous. You can't just make a grid, Scott says. Grids don't grow on trees, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are correct, Scott, they don't, but the paper that you draw on does. Um... <laughs> oh, I enjoy that very much. You guys make me laugh. Thank you. So, um, I have the over... Oh, I didn't actually see that die. I have the overpass already, so I was, I was going to say I would like the overpass to go here, and I rolled it. So there we go. Uh, there is my overpass, and that allows me to kind of do cool things with this piece of railway. Um, do I have everything I need to make that happen? Not quite yet. Uh, this needs to go off somewhere. I'm going to send that into the middle because I don't want to send it anywhere else. Um, and then I'm going to do the T-junction of railway is going to go here. Um, I'm going to move a little faster now that I've introduced all the core concepts of the game, just because I want to get through uh, all of these expansions. What is this brave new world? A grid in every home. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love having you guys on stream. Thank you. All right, that's round one. Uh, here we go with round two. Well, that's not very helpful. I don't want a curvy river right now. Um, I do at some point also need the... Uh, road bridge to come onto the river for this space here. Uh, one thing it might be worth, um, Matthew, I would have to remove dice from the tray as I play them. I can't believe you're keeping track of that in your head. Uh, it's actually, yeah, I've kind of started developing some new habits while I'm streaming. Normally I would do, but I'd like you guys to play along and I want to leave them in the tray for as long as I possibly can so that you have a chance to, to look over them. It does also help because I'm writing the numbers in the corner. I can easily just look at where I've written the numbers, what I've filled in, and uh, relate them back to the dice. Um, 
but I'm kind of training myself to be able to do things that make it easier for people to do things with me on stream because uh, I would like to be able whenever I do a roll and write that it doesn't like the castles of Burgundy roll and write is so detailed it would take you 20 minutes to draw out the grid to play it probably uh, but something like this where it's literally just a 7x7 seven seven, that's what I try and uh, uh, try and do um, yes, Billy also makes a point. You have this line of, of dice up here. It doesn't include the expansions. Oh, I just uh, glared that, sorry. It doesn't include the expansions, but it does allow you to mark off what dice are coming up. I'm not doing that, um, don't, honestly, because I hadn't thought of that yet, but that makes a colossal amount of sense. Um, wow, derp. Um, but yes, uh, that does make it, uh, that would make it easier to, to follow along with. So one thing I could do is I could just send this river off the board right now, um, to score myself that extra three points, but it's only your longest river, right? Then you choose one of your rivers, you gain one point for each space. And if both ends of that river are connected to the outer board. Yeah, so I don't really want to do that just yet. I'd like to keep that going. Um, what therefore do I want to do with what I have been given? Uh, well, I'm going to use that straight road right here, because I'd be foolish not to, I think. Uh, and just run that off the road, off the um, uh, board, rather. Uh, since I've got a lot of rail going on here, I'm also going to make this a station. Um, and hope that I keep rolling lots of rail, uh, because then I can just deal with rail over here. Uh, this can become that straight line, so that I have connected that up. So that's that, that, and that. I've, uh, I still have that curvy road. What am I going to do with the curvy road? I want that to be the road bridge, and I want that to be a straight river. Um, I'm going to do the river. I'm going to do along here. I'm just going to draw both of these in straight away. So that's two, that's two. I am going to try and use as many of the river dice as I can. As I said, you don't have to. If you choose to ignore them, you can. Um, I'm setting myself a bit of a challenge by doing this. Um, but that's me. I like doing that. Uh, curvy road. You know what? I'm just going to bring this and curve it around. There we go. So that's round two. Okay. Damn it. That's more curves. I don't want more curves. Uh, oh, wow. That's... Yeah. T-Junction Society. Um, but I really don't want that many T-junctions. That's horrible. Um, <laughs> do, do I just use that station and turn this back into a road again? Ah, uh, I might have to. My goodness. Okay, well, I'm going to put one T-junction here. Um... I'm not going to put one here just yet. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here. So that's those three. Uh, that station, where do I want to put that? And it's a straight station, which I don't really need right now. Um, uh, I guess I could have done a bunch of T-junctions over here too and turned this into a station, but I don't know, I'm feeling ambitious. You know what? I'm going to hope, against all blooming hope, that that river bridge is going to come up and I'm going to send that river off this way. So that's my river going that way. Um, the station, where is a useful place to put that even? Um, this is going to be a road. I'm going to put it here, I think. Uh, that's probably not that helpful. But maybe I can run track across the top. Uh, okay, that was round three. Round four. Oops. Oh, there's the road bridge. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to put that straight in here because I want to get this connected.
The other thing about this game, and I'm sure you, you know some of you guys who know this can agree with me, is it's really hard once you're drawing all over this grid to kind of draw with the pen, ho your, your wrist slightly hovering in the air or the bottom of your hand so that you're drawing over the top of um, all of the uh, things that you've drawn previously. Uh, then I'm going to draw the, one of the straight roads right there and just get that connected up. Excellent. Um, other straight road is going to go here. Uh, T junction. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've really messed myself up slightly here. T junction is going to go here. Oops, I'm going to write the fours in. Uh, what else have I got? I've got another straight. No, I just did that straight road. So that's that one, that one, that one, that one. I've got the corner of the river and that bendy station. <sighs> bendy station kind of would have been good. Though. I mean, I guess I could try and hope that they do a little thing over here. Um, I'm not going to use the curvy river because I want to send this river. I want two straight rivers, basically, and to go off here and here. Uh, bendy station, official name. Um... That makes sense, Matthew. And the pens in this game are trash. So, yeah, they're cute, but they are trash. Uh, it is true. Um, I'm just going to see what this link is that Matthew has shared here. Uh, what have we got? Oh, that's going to take a minute to load up because I'm using all the internet streaming. Um, what am I going to do with this station? Oh, I know what I'm going to do with the station. I'm going to try and make that connection there. And I'm going to send, no, I'm going to use it here. I'm going to do this. This is totally counterproductive to what I just did with this station over here. No, I am not going to be counterproductive. I am actually going to try and do this. I This is unlikely to go anywhere, I think. But I'm going to try and do this. There we go. Uh, this is round four. Oh my goodness, yes, thank you. User fancy. Um, Billy makes a very, very valid point. Uh, because there are only six rounds when you're playing with an expansion, uh, I haven't used any of the specials yet, and if I don't use one right now, thank you, I appreciate it. If I don't use one of those right now, I will start losing them. Um, I do indeed need to use a fancy. And I'm going to use this guy here to do... No, I'm not. I'm going to use, because if I do that, then I'm locking that off from everything else. Uh, right, fancy. Uh, if I'm going to use a fancy, then no, because I'm going to hope this all comes through. This may be me being woefully over hopeful, but I'm going to do that one there. Uh, also, the fact that I'm crossing these off, I don't know if I actually said this, you can only use each special once. Um, yes, thank you, Billy. I appreciate that. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to use the bendy river. All right. The other thing I could do is send this river off the map with a bend. Uh, if I don't get enough river, that's what I'm going to do. This is round five. Ah, bendy rivers. Okay. Um... Well, I got what I wanted for the road, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send this straight here, and then T-junction here. So those are both five. Uh, that's that done. I've got the straight railway, which is going to connect this up. Do, 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 do. Five. Um, I've got another bendy station. Is it just me? Forget the double straight river, it's forsaken you. Yeah, you're right. Um, also, is it just me, or does Bendy Station sound like it should be some kind of 90s kids TV show with a theme tune that sounds like Fraggle Rock? It's just what's going through my head right now. Um, bizarre musings of David when he's only half a cup of coffee down. Um, I do have another fancy to use. 
Um, okay, let's do, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. I've got the Bendy Station. Given what I'm doing, I'm actually, this again, it's kind of reversing what I was doing before, but I'm gonna do the Bendy Station here. Um, I am demonstrating capitalism at its absolute worst because clearly that little piece of train there, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that little piece of train there clearly exists to take you from one end of your street to the other. Um, goodness only knows how much wildlife was murdered in the development of that. Uh, I do not recommend. Um, do I just... Uh, okay, if I can get one straight, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be ten points worth if I send this off the board. So I'm going to do it. Anybody? That can be your title for your Just Chatting streams. Bizarre meetings with David when he's only half a cup of coffee down. Done. Yep. Um... Uh... Yeah, this is kind of right. Yeah, that's what's going to happen now that I've done that. But eh. uh, anyone who saw my last three stream saw me play Thunderbirds. I feel like this is now the secret stream underground that they didn't know anything about that collapsed the Empire State Building in Terra from New York City. Um, okay, so I've sent that off the board. I've got five, 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 and five. That's everything. I'm not going to send... I'm hoping... I'm going to hold out hope uh, for uh, one straight river. Uh, how many straight rivers are there even? There are three. There are three 90 degree bends on the river, and there are three straight rivers. One each of the two um, bridges, and one that's just a straight river. Which means I have a 50-50 chance on two dice of getting a straight river. Uh, and a 25% chance of rolling both of them, if my math is correct. Um... Makes me wonder what the title would be with David on no coffees. Uh, that would be me asleep on this gaming table right now, I think. Um, I immediately look at dice layout probability when I see custom dice. Is that weird? No, not remotely. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. I kind of do something similar a lot of the time. Um, it's not something I'm doing on stream because I don't want to use too much math unless the game really suggests it. Um, it was something I discussed briefly in my Thunderbirds stream because the dice in Thunderbirds have one, two, three, four, five, and bad on them, basically. They don't have a six, and so the math changes. A probability of seven is suddenly not your base um, median. So I totally understand that logic, yes. Uh, right, final roll. Double straight! Yeah, we knew that was happening. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to send this straight off the board. So that's... That. That's excellent. That gives me bonus points for the river. I didn't use a fancy last round, did I? Oh, damn. Um, I wasn't paying attention to that. Uh, I'm going to do one of my famous take backs, and I'm going to actually draw this fancy here. Sorry, I was too busy discussing the logic of dice. Uh, that was my round five fancy. Uh, because what I can do with that is hopefully send that road off the board and connect it up here just to minimize my um, minimize my dead ends. So I've used my stream there. I'm not going to use the second one because it doesn't really serve me any purpose. Uh... Oh, interesting. Hum. Um, okay, here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to T-junction this road. Actually, no, I'm not. I, now, here is where I am going to math something out. If I link this up, because I could use a 90-degree rail here and, a nine, and the station here, and then tie this back into the road so that everything is linked together, does that benefit me? No, I have a better idea. Never mind, ignore me. Uh, I'm going to T-junction this. Oh, I guess I end up with the same number of spaces, whatever I do. But I'm going to T-junction this here. That's six. I'm going to station here. Oh, I've got this waste of time down in the corner too, don't I? Uh, nope. Scratch all of the above. Here's my new idea. I'm not going to... Am I going to station that? I'm going to T-junction this.
I'm then going to use the river here. This is going to lose me a couple of points, but I think ultimately uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference. That joins that section up. I'm then going to station here. I'm going to send... Oops, I'm rubbing out my road down here. I'm going to send this guy off the board. Actually, no, I'm not. Stream... Yes! <laughs> yeah, you guys have seen more of me than I thought. <laughs> um, so that's six, that's six, that's six, that's six, that's six. My last thing is another railroad going to nowhere. I have to dead end that. There's nothing useful I can really do, so I'm just going to do this just to use that die, but then I'm going to use, doesn't really matter which one, I'm going to use this guy, and I'm going to put this here, and that gets me another exit into my network. Six. There we go. That is, no idea what round that is, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that is my completed board for uh, Deep Blue Rivers Edition. So I count uh, the number of exits I've connected. I think everything is linked, except for this piece of nonsense over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for 32 points. Uh, very zen. Yes, very true. Frustrating at times. I, when I say zen, I don't mean you're not going to go slightly bananas trying to make it work, but at least it's all working with you. Longest road uh, is going to be, I think, from, because stations count from here over to here would be my guess. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so 12 is my longest road. Longest railway is going to be through to here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I have filled in seven of the squares in the center. Dead ends. This is where I'm going to lose a few. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, I didn't draw that in. Eight. I think that's it. So minus eight. And my expansion points are going to be the longest river plus three for it going off both sides of the board. You choose the river, and it might not actually be your longest river. The example they give in the rule, rule book is a five length river and a seven length river, but you choose the five because both ends of it go off the board, so it's actually eight points instead of seven. Oops, nearly knocked my coffee over, that would have gone badly. Um, as it stands, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus three, which is gonna be 10. So final score, 32, 44, uh, 52, 59, 51, 61. There we go. That is the Rivers edition of Deep Blue. All right, I'm just gonna keep this moving because I am on a slight time limit. Um, <clears throat> and I do wanna make sure I get this done. I'm gonna have to go back and add all this stuff to BG Stats later. Um, okay, so clean board again. Actually clean board again. Um, friends, here's a revelation. Go for it, Casto. I'd make a terrible urban plan. <laughs> That's the interesting thing about these roll and writes. Um, I had a, a Loppy JCF is, is Jen, a friend of mine, and we had a discussion by text after I did my cartographer stream saying it would be really, really cool for world building. Which is true to a point, but the wonderful thing about all of these, like Carcassonne would make an excellent world building game, or, or Isle of Sky. I've actually taken a picture of some of my Isle of Sky kingdoms because they genuinely would make cool kingdoms, even King Domino. Something like this, the game has a habit of kind of dumping on you when you're not expecting it with your die rolls that just make things not make any sense. And I feel like this game would not make urban planners of any of us. But nevertheless, I appreciate the thought, Casto. All right, um, so, uh, Lakes Expansion. Um, the Lakes Expansion is extremely simple. 
Um, you can roll these dice again. Blue edition. You don't have to use either of them if you don't want to. Um, what you see here is that these have. Uh, oh, interesting. This is the, I, having my iPad here to do this uh, uh, insert is actually teaching me it is not Twitch that is responsible for all of the latency in my video. It's also the OBS camera is latent because it's uh, everything's happening a second or two after I've actually done it. Um, anyway, this has these lakes, which look like this. Um, this is a lake on one side of the die. This one is a lake on three sides of the die. And then the where you have a station on a lake, that is a pier. And uh, everything... Um, oops, I'm getting too close. Um, every station on the same lake connects to every other station as one big network, uh, which is another means of connecting road to rail and things like that. Uh, and there is a road pier and a rail pier on these dice. The additional rule that you get with the lakes is if at any point in time you have surrounded a square on three sides with lake, you immediately fill that square in with water. Um, and my assumption is, and I realize I don't know this, but I assume... That means you would flood road or rail if you did that. So my assumption would be you actually can't surround a road or rail on three sides. Um, I don't know why you'd want to anyway. Uh, yeah, that would be weird. Anyway, the big advantage with lakes is they allow you to connect a much bigger network together. The second advantage to lakes is um, you get one point for each square in your smallest lake. So there's a bit of... Uh, Reiner Knizia scoring going on here, where if you make a second lake, you want them both to be big. Uh, ideally, you just want one gigantic lake to get the most points. Anyway, um, six rounds. Uh, on we go. So, round one. Okay, so... I'm just going to move that because I'm also looking over... I'm looking at three different means of uh, seeing what these dice all are. So I've got a road lake, a rail lake. Logically, you kind of want the lake to start in the middle. Um, okay, interesting. Interesting. T-junction on the road. And... Okay. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to do road T-junction here. I'm going to have that station here. Um, I'm going to hope I get a T-junction of rail, and I'm going to put that there. I'm actually going to put the road lake here. Um, what have I got left to use? I've done the straight, I've got the bendy road. Um... I'm going to run that here. And the rail lake. I'm actually going to put here. This may not be a good move. I don't know. But again, I'm going to try and use as much of the lake as I can. Just because it's fun. Um, so that's my round one. Okay. Another pier. So the key thing, as I said before, every pier connects to every other pier. So what I kind of want to do, I'm going to do this. What I kind of want to do is actually have that pier somewhere else. So I'm actually going to put it here. And then road here and railway here. So that way, hopefully, I can join all of this stuff up together and then these two stations will automatically be linked to this one. That's how the peers work. Um, that's two. 
I have that overpass again. Okay, so here's a thing I can do. Oh, no, but I want to... No, that would be really, really stupid. Never mind, ignore me. Dum-dee-dum. Uh, I'm going to use this over here. Um, I'm going to use this guy here. The nice thing with the... Um, the rule that if you survive... Is that pier die? Oh, so Matthew asks, is the pier die locked rotationally or can you swap the road railway like you did? Um, the You can mirror a die at any point in this game. There isn't a... Like, there isn't a die that goes this way and a die that goes this way. There's the die that has a corner. Um, it allows them to put more options onto the dice that are available. So yes, you can mirror that die as long as I don't... Like, I couldn't turn that into a straight where the road goes in... And the rail comes out and then water floods in from either side. You know, you can't change the um, the orientation of what's on the die, but you can change the orientation of the die. Um, the nice thing about the lakes is you can fill this center space in really easily if you make it your lake. Because of the rule that uh, if, I, if I put water here now, this square will flood because it's already got two things around it. So if I put water here... Uh, so that this side is covered, this square will flood, which will flood this square, which makes that center nine so easy to fill in. Um, anyway, what have I used? I've used the two lake dice, I've used the curve, and I've used the straight road. I don't want the straight railway yet, particularly. Um, and I'm still not quite sure where I want that overpass. I'm going to put the straight railway here. And I'm going to put the overpass, I think, here. I don't know if that's going to serve me yet. I find the lake slightly more mercurial in terms of where it's going to suggest you put stuff because the options it opens up aren't necessarily um, oop, aren't necessarily going to uh, uh, become apparent until later in the game. Uh, Matthew asks, isn't the straight rail blocking the lake? I mean, yes, it is. I can't carry that lake on there, but because it's not that that square isn't surrounded on three sides by lake, it doesn't have to be lake. Uh, I can just have it locked off. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, edges of lakes do not count as errors. Yeah. So just to give you an idea, here in the rule book, you can actually see they've done the same thing right here. Um, as long as you haven't surrounded something on three sides, it doesn't have to be water, uh, and it doesn't count as an error at the end of the game. Um, so you've got a little bit of freedom there. Uh, when doing a lake, it doesn't have to have the drawn edges to count as complete. No, uh, that is a lava thing. Uh, and that's another way that red is slightly harder. When you're doing a lava lake, you get points if it's closed off. Uh, but with a lake lake, with a water lake, that doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so. All right, then I'm going to put one of these in here. Because that just makes sense to me. Uh, and I'm going to put... That's going to be the pier, like so. So, three sides surrounded by water on this one. So this immediately fills up with water. That surrounds all three sides of this. So this immediately fills up with water. Like so. And that's why I'm saying it's really, really nice to kind of solidly fill in this center. Um, you're feeling good about your purchase? I'm really glad. Uh, I'm glad that this has uh, this has given you enough uh, to kind of fill that in. Yeah, I really like the Cascading Lake too. Um, it's something... I'm obsessed with water playing well in games. Um, one of the games I'm going to stream in a couple of weeks probably is Pandemic Rising Tide. Uh, and the first time I played that, one, I lost horribly because it's so different to how you play base pandemic. But two, I fell in love with the water system. That idea that if there's a ton of water here, everything around it obviously has to have water. It just made so much sense to me. And I think it's it's use of water in games is really cool. Um, 
there is obviously a physics issue with the fact that you could have an open side of water that doesn't go anywhere, but presumably that just means that, you know, you're not drawing hills and mountains on this board. Presumably that's the edge of a valley or something like that. Um, there's a degree of uh, imaginative representation. The lava you'll come to see does actually have, like, a, a straight through railroad with one side that has lava on it and things like that that allows you to close it off but that's also because you get points for closing off lava um, so it's different in this and there's a little bit of creative uh, um, creative liberty taken I think okay so I filled that in and that's the only thing I've done so far um, I'm also going to fill in this guy here with the same so I'm closing this lake off, kind of, but uh, you kind of have to at some point. Um, I'm going to do that. There's still the scope to do this lake if I block that railway off. Um, but the nice thing that that allows me to do is then um, I can do this. I can do that station is going to go here. And then... Oh, no, that's... No, 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 no. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this station, was what I was thinking. It's going to go here. And then I can put the T-junction here. And now these two are connected to this uh, because there is a ferry boat that travels this corner of the lake. Uh, so that gives you a lot more flexibility in that sense. Um, so I've done that. That's my special for the round. I've used the T-junction and I've used both of those. Um, okay, what else have I got then? I've got another T-junction. and the station, and the straight rails. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna actually put the other T-junction here, and hope I get a couple of road corners. The station I'm not sure what to do with right now, because it's not that helpful to me. Unless I try and attach something else in. This is the problem, you see. I can't quite work out where this is all going at this point. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the station here. And I'm actually going to assume I'm going to go down. Draw that a little better. Like so. And that way, if I can T-junction and curve here, I'll be able to wrap all of this in, and I don't have to go up this way because the pier is going to take care of that connection for me. Um, and then the straight rail. It's just going to go here, I think, for now. No, it's not. That's dumb. It's going to go here for now. Obviously, it's in my interest to try and get this section locked in as well, but I've got more of a chance, I think, of doing something over here, which is why I'm focusing on it. All right, round four. Ooh, big lake. Um, interesting. Uh, I'm still not getting the rail I want. I may have to just uh, use a fancy for that. Thanks, Billy. I'm going to be calling them fancies now. That's... <laughs> Uh, it's cute. I like it. Uh, okay, I got the curvy road, which is going to go here first. If I can, I'd like to put one here too, just to lock that off, but I don't need it to fit, add this exit, so that can wait. Straight road is going to go here. And now this exit... Oops, it's round four. Now this exit is joined. And that's the nice thing, is if you have a really, really big lake, you don't actually have to... Um, spend too long making huge connections across the center. Um, Matthew says, what is the official term for the fancies? Uh, they are called special routes. Um, I had to look that up because I call them specials, but no, special routes. 
So I've done the road corner, I've done the straight road. What am I gonna do? That station is weird. I don't know if it's gonna serve me. Um, I have to put it somewhere. I might put it here, because there's more chance than anything that that is going to be rail. So I'm gonna put that there. Um, I've got the straight rail and I've got the straight road. No, I've done the straight road, sorry. I've got the straight rail, I've done the curve, I've done that, I've done that. The straight rail on the lake, yeah, okay. Um, I do not want to start another lake at this point because, <laughs> yes, Jeff, fancy, yeah, okay, yeah, the fancies, fancies is better than special routes. Sure, fancies they are. Um, I don't want to start another lake at this point, because if I do, it's... Oh, hello! I just saw my liberty for a bunch of... If I do this... See, this is what I love about this. You come up with all these really cool connections you wouldn't be able to make normally. Again, that is a phenomenal waste of real resources, creating that rail. Uh, but there we go. I still have to dump a straight rail somewhere. I think I'm just going to put it here for now and see where that takes me. And do I want that huge piece of lake? No, not really. So I'm going to leave it. Um, I taught this game at a convention and Hyama Huck walked by and corrected me on a rule. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I can imagine the feeling. I, was, I wondered if he might drop in today, actually, because he liked my Instagram post, but... Um, I don't know, maybe we'll see him, maybe we won't. Uh, oh, hello. No, I don't want that. That creates a new lake. That's really, really bad. Um, I was excited for a minute because I was going to use this die right here to stop that railway going into nothing. But that creates new lakes and I really, really don't want to do that right now. Uh, what have I got? T-junction road. Oh, that's great. I'm going to put a T-junction road right here. Oh my god, I can't draw today. That's a really fat road. Like, it's unnecessary number of lanes in that road. Um, I'm also going to put a T-junction of road here, and that tidies up this corner beautifully. I'm very happy with that. Um, that blasted... Oh, T-junction of rail. See, this is the benefit to waiting. Every now and then, the game is generous. Uh, I've got station and lake. I'm going to put lake here because it's more points. It's increased the size of my lake. This is still one huge lake, which is delightful. Uh, where am I putting that blasted station? Don't want it. Really, really don't want it. think that's all going to be rail. I'm going to assume this is all going to be rail. I don't know if this is going to be remotely useful, but I have to do something with it. I'm going to do that. And then I have I should use a fancy this round. Uh, I'm going to put one right here, I think. Yeah. I'm going to put this guy right here. That's him used, and that gives me a nice chunk of space. And then this is going to be round six. Ugh, did not get what I wanted. Rats. Um, oh, but I can still make that work. Ooh, kind of? Yeah, actually I can. Uh, I'm going to do this guy here. I'm going to do that station here. This is limiting me a little bit. I'm cutting off some exits. But I'm okay with that. Um, that'll get me a point to lose me a point. Not really necessary. 
So I've used the straight road and the station. Oops, let's actually put some track uh, sleepers down there. Um, straight road and station, I've got the T-junction and I've got the curve left. Can I do anything functional with that? I mean, this is all joined now. I can't join this exit and I can't join this exit. So I'm just going to put the, the curve in there to save me a couple of points. The T-junction sucks. Because I don't want it. Uh, and I don't have any road now sticking out anywhere. So I think the best thing I can do is put it right here. Because that way, at least, I'm only losing one point for it. And I'm not going to put... I thought about putting a piece of lake here. Uh, but that would... If I used this one, it would gain me a point for the lake to lose me a point for the dead end. So I don't really see the point in doing that. I think it's not really going to serve me. So here is my lakes grid. So let's score this up. Number of connected exits. Well, everything that has something leading to it is connected thanks to my lake. So that is going to be one... Uh, let's do from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for 36 points. Longest road is going to be very short. <laughs> It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think, because loops don't count. So I can't go 1, two. If loops don't count, Billy, you might be able to answer this for me. If I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and skipped this, would that be what the game considers a loop? I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Um, it's not something I've looked into the FAQ for because I've never had this exact query come up. Just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Um, just having a quick look just to see if I can see. I'm just going to Google loop in the rules queries. Ah, so um, somebody from Horrible Guild, by the looks of it, uh, Alexandro, Alessandro Pra, has said the no loops rule just means you cannot make infinite points by endlessly counting the spaces of a loop. The important thing is you cannot count the same space twice. So yes, point to point, oh, Billy said the same thing at the same time. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is going to be my longest road. Longest rail is garbage. It's probably going to be one, two, three, four, five, I think. Yep. I filled in all nine spaces in the center. Dead ends are going to be all over the place, probably. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Minus five. And then points for my smallest lake. Well, I only have one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I believe that's it. It's just one point. One point for each space occupied by your smallest lake. So I have 36, 45, 50, 59, 54, 64. Highest score yet. And that is everything that comes in... Oh, I didn't use a fancy. I don't think I can use a fancy in any way that is going to not just lose me more, or, or like lose me an equal number of points, because like I could create dead ends here. I'd actually create extra dead ends anywhere else. Yep, so I'm just going to ignore that. Um... That is everything that is in Railroad Inc. Deep Blue. Uh, I'm going to just erase this board, and then I'm going to move on, and we're going to look at Railroad Inc. Blazing Red. Um, and I think I'm going to have time to do both. Let's properly clean the board. All right, there we go. So I'm going to put this to one side now and bring in the red board. There is no functional difference between the boards. It's merely aesthetics. But since I'm playing the harder version of the game, and if anybody tunes into this halfway through, I want to make sure they are... <laughs> Billy says I'm looking forward to game six. All expansions. Um... <laughs> no, Billy. Just no. Uh, entertaining as that would be, no. Uh, Matthew says I need to get going to do some work. Thank you very much for joining, Matthew. I really appreciate it. Uh, you'll be streaming some Roller Right next Wednesday. Excellent. Um, I'm going to go and follow you right now. Um, no, I'm not because Twitch is being a pain. I'm going to go and follow you as soon as I'm done with this. Uh, and I will do my best to be there for your stream. 
Um, the red one goes faster, obviously, yes. Um, the WAG has indeed decreed that this game will be faster. Um, I trust you. Don't worry, Matthew. I will come along. Thank you so much for joining me, and thank you for the follow, and I will follow you back and see you hopefully on Wednesday, if not before. Uh, I'll probably be in again on Sunday, I think? Um, when you hit affiliate status, I'll make you a no-billy emote. <laughs> and Scott says he'll subscribe for it. Thank you. Uh, I feel like any time I play a roll and write, no-billy is going to be said on this stream. Uh, that's amazing. Okay, um, let's move on to rolling uh, Blazing Red. So, uh, we are bringing in the red dice for this, um, or the orange dice, I guess. It's Blazing Orange, really. Um, these are the lava dice. Um, and what the lava dice do is this is lava. It functions in many ways the same way as a lake. Uh, the thing with lava is it is... Uh, I think I've got this right. I realise I haven't played this for a little while. It is capable of destroying stuff, isn't it? Um... Must be connected. If I mean, you can draw a new volcano. If there's no cube for it, you must either open a new. Yes. Uh, if you cannot place lava on an empty space, you either have to start a new volcano somewhere else on your board and spread lava out from that, or you have to destroy a piece of terrain that you have built where the lava is trying to go. Um, at the end of the game, you will get uh, one point for your every space of your largest lava lake. So you are at least trying to make a big one. Um, Although that, of course, in this game is worse than lots of small ones, I guess. Uh, you also get five points for every lava lake that is fully sealed. Um, so that changes up how this scores quite a lot. So, here we go. This is round one of the Blazing Red Volcano. Oh, the very first thing you do for Blazing Red Volcano is you give yourself a volcano. So here is my volcano. The volcano space is lava by default. All four sides of it are lava. So that's my starting volcano. You always have that. The nice thing is you get one point at the beginning of the game because I filled in one of the nine center spaces. Um, all right, let's go with this. Um, I'm going to make this hard for myself for the outset, but let's just go for it. I'm going to put some lava in here. If you're very artistic, I'm sure you could do this where you're actually making the little bubbles that are on the uh, um, on the dice, but I am not doing that. I am not artistic. Um, although the one thing I really want to do is what Billy did in his cartographer's play, which I mentioned in my cartographer's playthrough, which is he drew each piece of terrain in... I think it was you, Billy. Um, I say that. I think it was you. Where he drew each piece of terrain in, in the colour it was supposed to be, and it looked gorgeous by the end of it. Uh, I may have a crack at that. Lava, the rules with the... Uh, it was you, excellent. The, the rules with lava is you must use one of the dice. You don't have to use both of them, but you have to use one of them. Um, do I have a suicidal roadway? Yeah, I'm going to. Don't know why I'm doing all the lava first. I should probably concentrate on building some roots, but stuff that. Buy a beer if you draw down, drive down this road. Okay, what am I actually doing now that I've done being careless? <laughs> um, that roadway is going to extend this way, I think. Uh, oh, but I can't. Yeah, I'm going to have to be lucky to seal that in now. Oh, well. Um, I enjoy being slightly crazy with what I do. Let's do... I've got those. Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to do this guy here. Do, 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 do. And then I'm going to go off this way. Um, and then I'm going to go, this guy is going to come in here. Oops, that's not right. This is the one that goes through. And what am I missing? Oh, the curved rail. He's going to come this way because he doesn't feel like getting burnt. There we go. 
That's round one. Hmm. Actually, that's quite good. That allows me to do some cool stuff. Um, I'm going to seal off this side of the lava so that we don't have to worry about it. Now that I've closed off those roads anyway, it's not like I need to worry about having a road going across here. Um, so I've used that. I may or may not use the second one because the I don't want to put anything here. I kind of need another road going through. We'll see if I get that or not. Uh, I'll drive that road for a beer. I need to get out of the house anyway. <laughs> Hope you don't mind a suntan. Um, I'm going to put the T-junction here. Okay. Um, I could just drive that road off the board right now, actually. Is that good? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. And then I'm going to do the station here. Uh, so I've done the corner, I've done the T-junction, I've done the station. I haven't done the straight road yet, which is going to go here. Um, <clears throat> so I've done those four. Do I want to use that second lava? I don't think I do. So I'm just going to leave that. I've used one, that's what I have to use. Alright, round three. Rats. Well, we knew this was going to be interesting. Um, okay. How do I want to do this? I'm going to put the station here. I'm just going to assume that this whole half of the board, like this side of the board, is going to be roadway. We'll see if that comes back to bite me in the neck or not. Um, I really want a T-junction. I'm going to hope I'm going to get a T-junction and I'm going to do this. I can always use a fancy to make it happen later. Two, no, three. I can count. So three, three. I've got to use a lava. I'm going to do this. Okay. T junction and bent roadway. No, T junction and bent railway. Railway is going to go here, and the railway T junction is going to go here. Oh, losing my eraser. Haha, ha, agreed. Yeah, fair enough. Getting out of the house definitely a good thing. So there we go. There's going to be my T junction. Also, hey Beck, thanks for coming in to join for a few. Um, that's that. Okay, that's done, round four. That's not what I wanted, I wanted road, not rail. Ugh, oh, rats. Um, oh, that really, really is annoying. Okay, well, it means I'm going to have... Actually, I think, uh, I mean, because lava has to be attached to lava, um, is it in my interest at this point to create a new volcano? I think it might be. So I'm going to put a new volcano here. As with lakes and everything else, there is no error to going off the edge of the board and as with rivers going off the edge of the board counts as closing off so what i can do is i'm going to put that here this is round four and i'm going to fill this in and that there i only have to seal this side off now um that's a round four volcano okay um that's that Overpass, straight, bent, bent. Where's the overpass going to go? Um, overpass is going to go here. 
I think. Uh, straight rail is going to go here. Um, bent road, bent rail. Bent road is going to go here. Ah, where's that going to go? It's going to go here. And the bent rail is going to go here. There we go. And I've done my football well, lava. Yes, okay. Um, okay. Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay, great. So I get to fill in this space here. Oh, I didn't use a fancy again. Blah! Um, I'm actually going to do this here for round four. Uh, just to make that work. Okay. Anyway, I most importantly, I get this. Which now means I can actually seal off my lava flow. Um, I'm going to do this guy here. And then the only thing I... The, the, the result I really want now... Sorry, I realise you're looking at the top of my head, which is the least interesting part of me. Um, what I really want now is the slant here next round, and then I can see all that off. <laughs> Rebecca's saying, "Let's uh, Billy, let's play on uh, tabletop sim sometime soon." Uh, Billy, tabletop sim is remarkably simple. Once you, it, the easiest thing we had uh, Chris Lemire to kind of talk us through using it, and it was so much simpler once we had somebody actually kind of guiding and saying, oh, this button does this, this button does this. Like knowing the button that flips a card over and things like that, really, really simple. So it's not something that's hard to kind of get your head around. It just takes, a, you know, 20 minutes of acclimatization once you're messing around. Um, so I've used that and I've used that. So that's my lava done. Um, and I've got the station I wanted too, which is going to go right here. Oh, no, it's not. I actually kind of want, no, no I don't care about sealing off that volcano. I'm just going to do that. And now that's connected into my rather lame network over here. Uh, T junction of rail is going to go here. Oops, that was terrible. Um, so I've done the station, I've done that. I've got a T junction of road. Oh, I want the T junction of road right here. Um, that's five. And then I've got a straight road, which I actually want to go here. There we go. That's round five. On we go. Round six. Final round of this game. Whoops. Oh, no. I can't close off my lava. That's really disappointing. Um... Also, that was a really weird sound. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I have to do this. That's that's a real shame. I would have loved to have been able to close that off and get the five extra points. Serendipity was not with me today. Um, all right, so we close that in. So this side is going to remain open. That is um, that is an error, which is sad. But there we go. C'est la vie. Uh, I'm going to put a straight rail here and connect this up. It's not a straight rail, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, T-junction of road. Oh, yay! Okay. T-junction of road is going to go here. I just realized I didn't use a fancy last round, did I? Doesn't matter, I don't think. Then I can use that station here. Um, what have I used? I've used straight rail, T-junction of road, T-junction of... Oh, a station. I've got the T-junction of rail left. Um, and I don't want to use that final lava die. 
T junction of rail is just going to go. I I eh, don't want it. Um, it's going to go here for the same reason I did that last game. It's just it's going to lose me just one point for the open end. Uh, but I'm going to use a fancy, and that fancy is going to be this guy. Because what that will let me do is this. And latch in one more connection. There we go. Um, thank you, it is quite a board. Uh, it's not quite what I was going for. I was hoping to connect a little bit more, but I feel like I've done a reasonably good job of what was given to me. So here's where we go. Um, connections. Now, I this is the first time in uh, the stream I've had two different networks. Uh, this goes nowhere, but here, this overpass means that this railroad and this road are not connected. So everything in this side and everything this way of that are two different networks. So I have one, two, three, four in this side, which is 12 points. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, which is 20 points. So I have scored a total of 32. You add those two together. Longest road is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Longest rail, I think, is going to be one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Also, I have filled in all nine squares in the middle, but my dead ends are going to be horrible. There's one there for the lava. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not as bad as I thought, minus seven. And then I get one point for my largest lava lake, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, 32, uh, 41, 50, 59, 52, 60. So not quite as good as my deep blue game. Uh, that was a 64, I believe. Um, but that is the Volcanoes expansion for uh, Railroad Inc. Blazing Red. Uh, which leaves just one, which is the Comet. So we're just going to do that, and then we are done. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Uh, there's a lot, of, there's a fair amount of thinking involved in this, which is why I suggested you also play along, because it'll keep you guys involved while I'm puzzling out what to do. Um, okay. So, final dice are the Comet dice. Now, the way this works, um, let's say I roll these two dice. That means that the comet is going to strike, uh, am I showing this the right angle for you guys? Yeah, comet is going to strike, um, sorry my iPad's on an angle, I'm just trying to work out the logistics, there we go, two squares north of where the comet last struck. For the first round you count from the centre space, which means if I rolled that as my first result the comet would strike here. When the comet strikes you draw a crater in that space, and as I mentioned you get two points for every road that connects to that space, which does it have to go? Yeah, oh, so it doesn't actually have to connect to anything. Uh, every open end that goes into a crater is two points. So you are kind of interested in that. Uh, if a crater strikes something you've already drawn, it destroys it, you erase it and put the crater there instead. You can then choose later in the game to erase the crater and draw something over the top of it, but it has obviously destroyed your work theoretically. <clears throat> Six rounds again, as with all the expansions. Um, the only thing I... Uh, yes, so on the Meteor die, there are two sides that look like this. <clears throat> and if I roll that, I am allowed to choose which direction I want the Meteor to strike. So, final game, round one. So, I can pick the direction and the Meteor is going to strike one space away. Do you do the Meteor first? <laughs> I mean, I guess theoretically I could draw a route and then have the meteor smash into it, but that seems stupid. Um, I'm going to say the meteor has gone here, so this is the crater. And you put a dot in the corner of that square to show that that was the most recent meteor hit. Um, once you have rolled the next one, you draw the crater, draw, put a dot in that square, and erase the dot in this square, then you always know where you're counting from. If We'll see if this happens. If the meteor, if it was here and it was going to go north, it would bounce back and come the other way, and every time it would land on a crater, you skip that space and keep going. So, um, this is kind of regular game, but with apocalypse happening. Yes, indeed. Um, 
I'm kind of back to drawing my roots based on what the white dice are because I'm not adding any kind of root with the meteor dice. So I've got to kind of switch my brain back into alternate mode. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the T-junction in here. You have to use all four white dice, as always. Um, you also have to uh, use both of the comet dice, because obviously they combine together to create the effect. Um, I'm actually going to put the station here. Seems like the best use of that. Uh, I'm going to do the bendy road here. And the straight rail I'm going to put here. I don't know if that's a good move or not. I'm sort of trying something different with each game that I play. Um, okay. That's round one. Round two. So, the comet is going to strike one space east. So it goes in here. So that's the space two comet. And I just put the dot there so I know that's where I'm counting from next game. Okay. Um, I really want a bendy station. Boo to all of these non-bendy stations. Well, one thing I can do is I can put a road here. Uh, a station here, sorry. And I can use that T-junction right there. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get ambitious, and I'm going to put this in straight away. I don't usually use the special routes this early, sorry, excuse me, the fancies this early in the game. But I'm going to try and see what I can do. Um, I'm going to do this and this. And then I'm going to do, uh, hang on, what have I done? Oh, because that was a special, right. And then I'm going to do this and see if I can make that all link up. That's a little bit more um, ambitious than I usually go this early in the game, but screw it. When you're doing something live, why not push yourself? Okay, so this is going to go two spaces. So next meteor comes down over here. That's our space three meteor. If that goes south now, I'm going to have a really bad day. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to put the station here. And then the T-junction here. No. Yes, maybe. Because I've got to tie this in. Yeah, that's going to be the T-junction. Those are both round three. You can also see from where I'm drawing, I'm being a little heavier handed, I think, just because I've been doing this for a while and my hand's getting a little tired. But it is also um, uh, starting to flatten a little bit and not draw as smoothly. What are you saying, Billy? You have no spur to prick the sides of your intent, I guess. <laughs> fair. Very fair. I'm just going to move this up. I realise there's some glare on the board. My apologies. Um... Oh, you guys are great. Thank you. Uh, that's going to come in here. And Bendy Road. Sure, this is probably going to get destroyed, but I'm going to do this. Uh, this is not round four. This is round three. Um, I know, right? Jen just said I have the images of uh, cars driving off the edges into the craters. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the imagery of how this works doesn't really help. I, I imagine that road descends like so. Uh, but there isn't really an image for that. So yeah, it's just kind of like, let's go and pick some stuff up from the wall! And off you disappear. Um, so I really, really do not want uh, something to come back and smash that. That would be really annoying. So here's the deal. What I could do, if I choose, at the beginning of round four, is before I do anything, I can choose to use a special. 
if I choose to use a special, that means I am, I can, if I do it straight away, I can nix rolling for a crater. In fact, I'm just wondering something actually. Okay, so I could have chosen to use this fancy here to nix using the meteor die. I didn't do that, I used it after the fact, that's fine. I'm wondering if I want to do that now, because if that meteor goes in two possible, three possible directions, because it would bounce off the wall, it's going to destroy something of mine. I can't hold that at bay until the end of the game, so maybe actually the best thing I can do is roll it now, find out what's going to happen and go from there. If it goes north, I'm fine, to a point. Um, I just don't want it to go southwest or east. Um, and of course it's going to go south one space, and oh my lord. Okay. So... That road just got smashed to pieces. Now, Billy, tell me if I have this right or not. Do I get six points for these and this is the only dead end that's over here right now? Because technically both of these roads go into this guy. Let's just put a dot there. Because it just says that routes that end in a, in a thing give you two points. So is it actually in my interest now to leave those there? I mean, it's it's not as good. I sh if I get a T-junction, I should build it back over the top. Uh, you're a blue boy at heart? Okay. So here's my rule. If you have any thoughts on this, let me know. At the end of the game, you gain two points for each route that has an open end connected to a crater. I guess my question with that is, does a route have to go off one of the exits? Or is it just a route? Um, if you have any thoughts, I would appreciate that. Okay, what am I going to do? I have a lot of railway. That's a good thing I'm using a lot of railway. I'm going to... Uh, I don't want an overpass. I kind of want a station there. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Um... I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. I'm going to do this. And I'm actually going to do this because my hope is going to be... No, I'm not going to do that yet. Where do I want to put this overpass? A route is a single space, so yes, six points. Okay. So if I don't roll a road T-junction, this is not the end of the world. The T-junction would be better as soon as I link this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Currently, I have one, two, three, four, five. Actually, ironically, a T-junction would not be better as soon as I link this. Because that would add four points. Whereas I'm getting six right now from the craters. Now, if that thing comes back and tanks me again, I have other issues. Um, I still have to place this confounded overpass, and I don't really want it. I think I'm actually going to put it... Ah, I'm going to put it here. I don't really want to do this, but... Um, okay, there we go. So I can now choose to use a fancy in order to stop myself having to smash up more of my stuff. I'm going to do that. So I don't roll the comet dice this turn. And I'm going to put a fancy here. And I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to do a road into the station. And then these guys are all rail. So I don't have to roll the comet dice because that Rolling the Comet Dice is a special route. Um, my reading of the rules is I can still use a special route on a turn that I rolled the Comet Dice on, but I do not have to use one if I choose to use the special before I do anything. All right, there's my results. I did not get the straight road I wanted, and I did get another of those stinking overpasses. Well, I'm going to put in a, a T-junction rail right here. 
So that's now linked up. I'm going to do a straight rail here to link this one up. I think I might actually do the overpass here. Not quite what I had in mind. And then I've got another straight rail, right? Because I've done straight rail, overpass, T-junction. Yeah, I've got another straight rail. Let's put that here. No, let's put that here. Um, so I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, smudging my rail. I could make seven into eight. That's still only four points. In fact, at any point, it's only four points to add. So I'm kind of incentivized now that I have this mess over here to leave that. Casto says, my reading is you're spending the special to cancel the meteor. Yeah, and I, my reading of it was I can still use the special, but by spending it before I roll the dice and knowing what I... Oh, sorry, I apologize. That was not so visible. Um, by spending it before I roll the dice, that's what cancels out the meteors. I can still spend one after rolling the dice, but then the meteor has happened. Uh, that was my take on it. Okay. <clears throat> I think... I'm rolling from here, which means if I roll a 1 and any direction, my roads get smashed. Because a 1 this way would smash this, a 1 this way would smash this, a 1 this way would go here, because it jumps the empty space, and a 1 this way would bounce off the wall, jump that, and land here. This route then wouldn't exist. I'm going to spend a special and keep my 6 points going over there, I think. One fancy for me! Now the question is, where do I put it? Because this is what I'm really interested in, but I don't really have a result that would be of any interest to me over there. I guess I could do this one and hope that I get a station to connect this, just to stop that from being a gap. Because um, I want a bendy railway here, ideally. I'm not going to get these connected, I don't think, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, yeah, let's do that. This is risky, but in terms of creating extra um, extra access for myself, but this is what I think I want to do. So I've used that. I've used my three specials. I'm not rolling for the comets. So this is the round six dice. Oh yes, Izzy Dusk is indeed cast up. Ah! Okay, well I got my bendy railway. Um... I can at least send, I can send this off the board over here, so I don't lose points there. I can send this off the board here, so I don't lose points there. Um, oh, that was six. Was this five? There's the special. Five, five, five. Yeah, that was five. <clears throat> so, I've used my special here. I've used the station, a bent thing, a straight thing. I need to use another bent thing. I can't get to one of the craters. Maybe that's what I should have been focusing on. I'm just going to do this. We all know where that train line's going to go. I'm going to go and mine that crater. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's the end of the Comet game. Uh, so, let's just count up. Um, I did not connect this anymore. That crater has smashed that route, even though I have two things going into it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for 28 points. My longest road is three, <laughs> which is here. My longest railway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I only filled in three of the squares in the middle. Oh, dead ends. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, only five. And for specials, for the comets, it's the uh, two points. Um, 
So I get two points for going into here, two points for coming into here, and two points for coming into here, so that's only six. So 28, 31, uh, 47, 50, 45, 51 is my score for the Comet uh, edition of Railroad Inc. Blazing Red. And that's it. Those are all the variations of Railroad Inc., the base game in all four of the expansions. Uh, that gives you some idea of how this all plays. Um, I'm glad that uh, Matthew, at least, has found a game uh, he is interested in buying, and I think Jen was interested as well. Um, thank you guys for coming and joining me. Uh, this has been Once Upon a Die. Uh, this is something I'm, I'm sort of getting really into now, and I'm delighted to see that my view account has, has really increased. Thank you all for coming to watch me today. I really appreciate that. Um, I would love it if you would follow, if you haven't already. Uh, I'm creeping ever towards uh, getting myself affiliate status, and, and I'd love subscriptions if that's something that you are able to do uh, once I do get that. But I'm at, uh, I'm at 22 followers right now, so I would love it if you could spread the word to other people who might enjoy what I'm doing. All of my content is solitaire. For any who don't know me, I focus on solitaire board games. Um, am I enabling you, Jen? Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> all of my content is solitaire. Uh, Once Upon a Die was originally a podcast. Um, it, uh, it looks at solitaire games, and uh, my focus when it was running regularly is, is either to talk about a less thematic game, or to talk about a thematic game, but intersperse it with a radio play, uh, fully voice acted, that I write based on a single playthrough of a game. Um, there's about a dozen episodes of that online, plus a couple of others, like my top ten solo uh, games, and I also interviewed Z Garcia a while ago of the Dice Tower. Um, the podcast has been uh, on hiatus for almost two years, with a couple of small exceptions, but I'm hoping to bring it back again once I can sort out voice acting and so on in this uh, strange world that we find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, in the meantime, this Twitch stream is what I'm doing instead, so playthroughs, tutorials and playthroughs of Solitaire games, potentially moving a little bit into video games in due course, um, just to sort of fill the blanks, because I only have so much uh, in the way of uh, board games with me at the moment, uh, and indeed uh to playing back games i have like I'm, I'm i did thunderbirds as my last stream i'm thinking of doing that again in the future but with all of the expansions attached to it and things like that uh i'll probably do another call to adventure as well just because i love it and it's so storytelling which is one of my, my favorite things in in board games um in the meantime uh please as i said please follow me on twitch uh you can also head over to youtube search once upon a die uh, i upload all of my twitch content onto youtube as well after the fact so if you aren't able to catch a stream it'll be there later please do subscribe there as well and I'd love it if you subscribe to my podcast, too. It will be coming back in due course. Um, and leave me some reviews on uh, iTunes, on uh, YouTube, just to leave some comments on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to turn on the Klingon subtitles on YouTube. I will be using them to highlight any mistakes that I have made throughout the game. They will not be written in Klingon text, don't worry. Uh, they will be English. But they will tell you if I have screwed up anywhere down the line, uh, or if I forget to explain something earlier that I'm going to explain later, I might just hint at it earlier on so that you guys know what's going on. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much indeed. I'll be back, I hope, over the weekend uh, with something else uh, a bit heavier than this, I think. Um, we'll see. And uh, thank you to everybody who's been watching. I've just seen a few last minute comments come in. Um, thank you all. I really appreciate your uh, appreciation of what I'm doing. Thank you for enjoying it. Um, another live play together soon, Casto? Yes, I hope so. I want to do something. Uh, Jamie Stegmeier, um, Kevin Wilson, and Jeff Engelstein have all released games recently available on uh, their social media to download. Um, Kevin Wilson's is... is uh, you can play it with multiple people, but it's kind of co-op-y. It doesn't really have a multiplayer component the way that this does. Um... But um, uh, Jamie's and uh, Jeff's, I believe, although I haven't played Jeff's yet, uh, but certainly Jamie's, uh, I can play a game and you can use my die results to play your version of the game as well. So I very much want to do that probably next week. Um, the game I play over the weekend, if I can get a stream in over the weekend, is going to be something more in the realm of, uh, you know, a, a, a big solitaire version of something. Um, we'll see. Um... Scott says, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce placard, perhaps, uh, which I assume is the Klingon text. Latin, Latin orthography does Klingon much better for our purposes. Fair enough. Um, and uh, any other thoughts? Oh, he also says the radio plays are so much fun. Yes, Scott has been a voice actor on a couple of my radio plays. He was in Thunderbirds uh, as Parker. <laughs> 
um, and he was in uh, what was the other one you did, Scott? Uh, you did XCOM. You were the, the the communications officer in XCOM. I think it was those two. Maybe another one. I forget. Um, but yeah, they they were a lot of fun, and I would love you guys to listen to them. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching Once Upon a Die. I really appreciate it. Please do spread the word if you can. And in the meantime, please keep rolling those dice until the game is done. Stay safe, and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.